Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm printing, painting some fabric today. This is just real basic, real simple, and a fun thing to kind of experiment to get some different texture looks on some fabric. I'm calling them backgrounds, but they're not necessarily just backgrounds. And here's what you'll need. I'm using Jacquard textile color in several different colors. I'll mention them as I go. And also they have a light body, light body metallic acrylic. I'm also using that. Because I'm on fabric, I'm not going to be using straight acrylic paint. I have a couple brayers, but you could just put wax paper down or parchment to rub this, this um, project. I just like to use the brayers. I've got some sticks to get some paint out if I need to. I'm using brown paper bags for this project. I have a soppy kind of light uh, brush that I'll use for dropping. I have a paintbrush and I have uh, just a cheapo paint, cheapy paintbrush and I have some foam brushes. I have a container that will hold the bag and it's got water in it. I have extra water on the side. I have some paper towels or something for mopping up. I'm on a surface that can get wet or painted. And so I'll begin by taking the brown paper bag and I'm gonna tear it open at the seam and I'll also tear the bottom off. Then after I have it torn open like this. Oh, I should mention, you're gonna also need some white fabric. I am using a cotton fabric, 100% cotton fabric. So back to the bag. So I have it torn, the bottom's torn off, and I sometimes tear the top, it just sort of depends on what you want to do. And then I'm going to wad it up, and that's noisy, so I won't do that here. I have one already processed. I'll wad it up, and I'll put it into the container with water. And I'm going to let it soak. This has been soaking quite a while, but it's up to you. It does get a little softer and a little more pliable so the longer you leave it in. I don't know if it would ever just fall apart on you when you pull it. You don't want to soak it that long. And I'm going to set my water aside. I'm going to use that water. So, whoops, see there it tore. So it was in there a little too long. But in this project, I don't care if it tears. I may, uh, as I was saying, I may use some of that, the water that's a little bit colored because of the brown paper bag. Now, you can lay this any old way you want, and that's going to create your design. I found something that I really like is to to do it sort of like this, uh, just straight lines, straight pulls that I'm angling a little bit, and I'll show you why I'll, in the projects that I have going. And you can take the regular, um, one of the brayers rather, and go across it and flatten it. You don't have to do this step, I've done it both ways. And then you kind of get an idea of how your your image is going to be. And then at, to start with, I'm going to use, uh, this is burnt umber, and it takes only a tiny bit of paint. I'm going to put a little bit here in my palette. That was way more than I need, but, well, maybe it wasn't. We'll see. We'll see. And then I'm just saturating the edge of the, it's hard to see that on this black, the edge of the foam brush with the brown paint. And then I'm going to lightly pull it across the design. If you push hard, it'll go down into the flat part. It's all up to you and what you're trying to achieve, which is not really, you just have to sort of um, be open for whatever happens with this. Okay, I'm going to take a little teeny bit. I know this, I haven't used it in the past, this burnt umber. No, what have I got here? The russet. The russet is very strong color. Even though it doesn't look as dark as the brown, it's just a stronger color. So I'm not going to put too much on my brush. And I might be a little selective in where I put it, or I might not. Again, just play. Let yourself just find out what happens when you do certain things. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of my fabric. 
this piece is good. Now if you lay it down and drag it, it will change your design and your paint. So I try to just sort of set it on the edge and flop it down. Don't wait too long. This fabric is dry. You can try it wet, but it will really mush your design. When I do it at first, the first print, I like to do it with the uh, fabric dry and the paint wet, of course. So now I'm going to just push my brayer across. If there's a lot of paint on it, it might gush out. Don't be surprised. Just realize that could happen. If you get paint on the brayer, you'll put it on. This is the back side. A lot of times I like the back side as much or better than the front. If I move it a little bit, it will blur the lines. Just all these are just things that you kind of find out while you're doing it, if, if that happened. You push really hard, you can go back and forth to get it down into the crevices. And I do almost always like the back as much as the front. And so that's my print. There's a little glob of paint there. I could leave it, but I think I'm gonna just rub it out a little bit so it's not quite so strong in that area. And I'm really pleased with this. So what I would do is let this dry and decide if I want to do a wash over the whole thing. I'll show you a wash in the next step. So I'll set this off to the side. With this paper, once it's really dry, you open it, you can open it up and pull it. And when you do, you will get something like this. And I'm actually using this in a paper collage on a canvas. I'm going to put a wash over this piece now. It's all dry. And I'm going to mix some yellow ochre and some burnt umber. This might end up with some black specks, but that's dry paint, so I'm not too concerned about it. Let's see if my yellow ochre mixes in. Well, that's an interesting color. Kind of like it. I'm going to. Oh, normally I don't get my fabric all wet, so I guess I won't. And I like to use a brush for this instead of a, a foam. I like to use a regular cheapy brush. So I'm really, this is really going to be thin. And I'm just on plastic this time, so I won't get any wrinkles, but I also won't be able to probably move it. Any black specks that come on here because they were in here, they'll probably either brush off or they'll stay there. It's no big deal. And I can see that that's pretty. But you know what? I want it a little darker. Hopefully I won't be sorry. There's kind of some glare going on. Sorry about that. And a little darker. I did like it with more yellow, I have to admit. So I'll show you what we can do. I'll just finish with the wash. And if I stop and let this be, there will be a line <clears throat> where the dry is. So I want to go all the way across at one time. I'm going to put some draw some yellow across there. Much more interesting, I think. And there's bubble forming in, under this. You can see these little bubbles? I like that. I don't always like that. If you're doing a water piece, it's fantastic. But right now, I'm kind of liking that. I even like that it's lighter here and it goes to darker. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. I have another bag. I'm gonna tear some pieces. Whoop, that was a little too straight. Tear some pieces off. Just sort of random. These are coming out shorter than I really wanted, but 
you'll be able to see what happens. I'm just going to build a kind of build a design on here. This is sort of what I did for my hummingbird, only it was skinnier strip, thinner strips. Narrow, more narrow strips. I think this bag just soaked too long, so I don't have as much control over it. And I'm going to leave some gaps just for the heck of it. I'm also going to fold some of this over on itself so it's a little bit thicker. This is doubled up here, you can see. So we're sort of layering it about. Just to give it some kind of organic, organic, nope, too straight, organic feel to it. But my fabric's wider, so I'm gonna a little bit wider with it. Anyway, you can see how you could just put almost any kind of design on here that you want. Now I'm going to take my emerald green. I need a little more. So I'm using the emerald green this time. And I'm going to... I didn't roll this. Uh, I think I will. I think I will. Just flatten it down a little. Again, not necessary if you don't want to or don't have a brayer. And then I'm going to pull the paint over it. I didn't get enough paint. And these lines will come on the fabric to show up on the fabric as well. I need a little more paint. Maybe a lot more. Too much. It's okay. Because if I just paint the whole thing, it's going to be sort of defeating the whole idea of getting a print. You could shape little rocks and do make some rocks for another project like applique, applique or another collage type piece. Yeah, I know I got I know I've gotten got too much paint on here, so I'm gonna dab that off. If it's not so there's too much on my foam brush is what the issue is. There we go. And I am gonna leave those lines in there. Just let the fabric pick them up. Okay. Now I'm going to take another piece of fabric, and it's dry. I think, no, I'm going to just lay it on here, and I have a thread. Let me get that off. You, so you, if you don't have a brayer, you can put some wax paper or parchment and just slide your hand around on this. And that works too. Oh, I can see that would make something cool for underwater. And where the where the there was water, a little heavier water on my brown paper, that's what this is doing here. Made it blur a little bit down there. Let me turn this over. I like that. Okay, that's cool. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll show you the next step. My piece is all dry. You could do this shortly after it's been printed on there and not let it completely dry. The lines will probably stay pretty strong, but I wanted them really strong for this one. And I have some of my brown paper water that the brown paper bag was in, and I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in there. So I'm going to make a little yellow wash. This yellow is pretty thin, but um, 
and I'm just guesstimating how much will make a decent yellow wash. And I'll stir that. This is too much water to the paint, so keep that in mind. It's going to be fine. If there's little blobs of color, though, I may or may not want those. I'm going to start on an edge, and I'm going to just pull that across. So if this hadn't dried, the green hadn't dried, it would have mushed it a little bit, which would be cool. Just try these different, different ways of doing it and see what you come up with. So the wash is to put color down without altering the original print very much. But if I had printed that in blue and done the yellow on top, there's a good chance it would have turned green like this. Just one more thing for the experimenting list of things to try. While the yellow is wet, I'm going to take a little bit of this metallic with a little bit of water and I have a paintbrush. This paintbrush is not my best soppy brush. I have another one I'll use. This would have been better which I'll use for the orange. So now I'm going to sort of splatter Again, I'm going to move that aside for a second, and I'm going to put a little bit of orange, use that other brush. Okay, so I'm just mixing again. It's sort of a wash. This is a little stronger than a wash, but definitely the, the fabric, uh, excuse me, the paint is a lot thinner. And now I might think a little more about where I drop these. rather than just splattering. And you can see what's happening because of the, the fabric being wet. They look like planets. The wax paper underneath could be causing that as well. Whoop! <laughs> I'm playing with my equipment today. I think I want some more. I think I want to cover this whole piece I've just decided. Okay, so I'll let this dry and bring it back and show it to you. This is my piece, and I thought I was going to see flowers, but I'm actually seeing a school of fish. <laughs> Here are some of the projects I'm working on that I've used these background fabrics. This is a fish. It's free motion quilted, and I've added some kelp. The owl is doodled with a marker. I call this meandering. The hummingbird is hand embroidered. The pumpkins are embroidered and then I painted it again. There will be a little video on this coming. The trees are just the background tree trunks with a couple different greens on a foam brush. The purple tripod flower is stenciled and you can kind of see there's a vase. This is going to be a paper, paper and fabric collage. I hope these projects have given you ideas. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. And be sure to tap the bell to get notifications for new videos. This has been Anne. Thanks for watching.